This is Mr. Anderson for Kellogg Community College, and we'll be looking at this uh, trigonometry video for session 13, which is chapter 3, session 5, I believe. Um, and we're going to be looking at the sum and difference formulas for sine, cosine, and tangent. And on the second part here, we see a, a new style of problem where we start off with the um, expanded part of the formula. And by thinking about whether this is sine, cosine, or tangent, we can actually get the exact value from that. Um, because what you can see here is that this is a sine of 20 degrees and 80 degrees. And since there is a symbol in the middle, which is a minus, that will be a subtraction. So what we would then do is look up on our uh, unit circle for the negative 60 degree angle or the positive 300 degree angle because using the odd even formulas we can make this the negative uh, 60 degree or the negative of the 60 degree answer which again would be the same as going um, the sine of 300 degrees you know from this moment and that gives me this exact answer of the square root of 3 over 2 thank you unit circle now this is a cosine formula this is cosine of 40 degrees and 10 degrees and since cosine formulas are opposite of these, that would be subtraction. So this gives me the cosine of 30 degrees. And what's nice about that is that's an exact formula, an exact answer of, wow, <laughs> square root of 3 over 2. This is going to be a tangent, uh, 40 degrees and 10 degrees. And since that numerator is a minus, so is that. So this is going to be the tangent of 30 degrees. And that is exactly square root of 3 over 3. For the next two problems here, we have a little trick for you because these are in um, these are in uh, radians. Uh, this is a cosine formula because of cosine, cosine, sine, sine, and the alpha is five pi over twelve, and the beta is seven pi over twelve. Now these would be added because the cosine formulas are opposite of what the symbol is there. So if I added these together, I'd get five pi and seven pi makes a total of twelve pi. So cosine 12 pi over 12 this is the same thing as cosine of 1 pi, or just pi, and cosine pi at that 180 degree mark is negative 1. All right, and finally, before I move to the bottom half of this section here, I'm going to take the sine. This is a sine formula, and I can tell because of sine, cosine, cosine, sine. And this is going to be pi over 18 plus 5 pi over 18, which makes a total of... 5 pi, this is 1 pi over 18, 5 pi over 18, 6 pi over 18. I would simplify that. So this would be the sim, this would be pi over 3. Uh, because 6 and 18 can both be divided by 6, and 6 goes into 6 once, and 6 goes into 18 three times. So sine pi over 3 is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. All right, there you go. There's problem number 9. So let's move on to the bottom portion here, uh, finding exact value under given conditions. And uh, my strong recommendation is that you draw the triangles. Um, so for example, this is uh, the cosine. Now, e each of these problems is going to start off with um, a cosine of an angle and a sine of an angle. And we're going to run through the process of adding the angles and finding their cosine and sine, subtracting the angles for sine, just to give an example there. And also we're going to do a tangent where a is alpha is subtracting beta. So this is the cosine of alpha of square root of 5 over 5 in the first quadrant. We know it's in the first quadrant because our alpha goes between 0 and 2 pi, or 0 and 90 degrees. So here's a right triangle in the first quadrant. There's our alpha. And so our alpha will then be um, looking at this cosine and cosine's definition is um, from, you can think of this from Sokotoa if you'd like, but it's adjacent over hypotenuse. So here's the adjacent side, and here's the hypotenuse side right there. Now we need to find our y value there, which is our, um, which is going to be the missing piece that we'll use for our sine and other uh, values here. So let's uh, actually find y. Uh, we're going to go with our x squared plus y squared equals uh, our hypotenuse squared. So what we have here is 5 plus y squared equals 25. Moving a step ahead there. 
subtract 5 from both sides, y squared is equal to 20. And therefore, if I take the square root of both sides, y equals plus or minus the square root of 20. But we do have to make that into a um, simplified radical. So that would be y is equal to, and in this case, since we can choose plus or minus, since the y is positive here, it's going to be positive 2 square roots of 5. Now how I got that is the square root of 20 is the same as the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. And the square root of 4 would be 2, and the square root of 5 is just square root of 5. And again, I chose the positive answer because I'm in the first quadrant, and the y values are positive. Now, that's important to know for um, the problem that I'm about to attempt. So there's my three piece of my cosine of theta right there. Now what I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at my um, sine of beta. Notice that uh, my beta is between negative pi over 2 and 0, which means I'm in the fourth quadrant, because negative pi over 2 is negative 90 degrees. And so since I'm in negative 90 degrees to 0 degrees, uh, there's my theta right there. Um, okay, now the definition of sine is going to be the opposite over hypotenuse. Now the opposite would be the negative 4, because my x value, or my y value would be negative, and my x value would be 5. Now, I can use Pythagorean Theorem, um, but I would probably recommend that all of you get to know your 3, 4, 5 triangles because my x value here is going to end up being 3. Because anytime I see a 4 and a 5, where 5 is the hypotenuse and 4 is the leg, then the other leg is going to be 3. And I'll actually write that out for you. This is going to be negative 4, quantity squared is equal to, oh, I'm sorry, my hypotenuse squared. And here my hypotenuse squared is going to be 5 squared. So x squared plus 16 equals 25. x squared is equal to 9. Take the square root, so this is going to be plus or minus 3. But since the x is positive, the x is going to be 3 in this case. Now I need these values. I need the missing pieces of these triangles because when you start to get into the formula for sine of alpha plus beta, so here it is, sine of, of alpha plus beta, What's going to happen is you're going to actually need the sine and cosine of each one of these triangles. So you're going to need the missing pieces. Um, so the sine of alpha plus beta is going to be the sine of alpha times the sine, or cosine, excuse me, of beta. And I'm going to add that to the sine of beta times the cosine of or sorry, alpha, whoops, oh. <laughs> I, I, I did it the old way that I learned in high school, sorry about that. So sine of alpha, cosine of beta, and then I'm going to have cosine of alpha, sine of beta. All right, so I, that way I keep the alpha, beta, alpha, beta thing going, like I've been teaching in the first section here. Well, the sine of alpha, if I go to my, uh, and now what might help a little bit is that you may want to change that theta into an alpha. Um, the sine of alpha is going to be my uh, opposite over hypotenuse, so this is 2 square root of 5 over 5. And my cosine beta, uh, if I go to my beta here, so I'm going to have my beta there, my cosine of beta is going to be my adjacent over hypotenuse, or 3 fifths. Alright, so there's that. Plus, I've got my cosine alpha, and cosine alpha is going to be, uh, again, go to my alpha, hit my cosine, my cosine is the uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, so that is going to be the square root of 5 over 5. And then what I have here is my sine of beta, and my sine of beta is going to be my negative 4 over 5. So this is negative 4 fifths. Now what I will do next is I would then just multiply top times top, bottom times bottom in both situations, and this is going to give me 6 times the square root of 5 over 25 plus the negative 4 times square root of 5 over 25. And I can simplify that down to 2 square root of 5 over 25. So 2 square root of 5 over 25. Now what I'll do is uh, in part b, we're going to actually look at uh, cosine of alpha plus beta. Alpha plus beta. So what this is going to do is give me the the formula of cosine alpha cosine beta. And we're going to go minus sine alpha sine of beta. So the cosine of alpha, again, let's go back to alpha here, is going to be square root of 5 over 5. 
and cosine beta is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, three-fifths. You're going to see a lot of common denominators here. And then we're going to subtract from that the sine of alpha. The sine of alpha is going to be 2 square root of 5 over 5. And the sine of beta is going to be uh, negative 4 fifths. So I'm going to put a little parentheses around that so you see it's not subtracting the four, negative 4 fifths, it's multiplying. So here's what you get. You get 3 square root of 5 over 25. And what, else, what you get over here is you're going to get the um, plus because negative times negative is positive, you're going to get 8 square root of 5 over 25. And adding those together, 3 square root of 5 and 8 square root of 5 is 11 square root of 5 over 25. Then we're going to move on to part C, which is the sine of alpha minus beta. Now, the only difference that's going to happen in this problem is that it's going to be the same thing, except instead of this being a plus, it's a minus. So I'm going to kind of skip the middleman here and write our double negative which is going to be for the so it's going to be instead of plus minus it's going to be minus minus so it's plus over 25 so this gives me 10 square root of 5 over 25 divide top and bottom by 5 which is 2 square root of 5 over 5 okay part D and this is going to take the most space because the tangent one requires a little bit of simplification at the end so this is going to be the tangent of alpha minus beta tangent of beta multiplied by, since we chose minus because of the actual problem up there, 1 plus tangent alpha times tangent beta. These um, tangent formulas uh, require a little bit of tricky simplification, but if we use tangent of alpha, that's going to be opposite over adjacent, so this is 2 square root of 5 over square root of 5 plus and we're going to then turn this into, from here, uh, negative 4 thirds. And the reason why I put plus instead of minus is if I had a minus negative 4 thirds, that would just change it to a plus. Now down below here, what we have is we're going to have 1 plus, and this is 2 square root of 5 over 5, square root of 5 in this case, both of them being square roots. And then what we have there is going to be minus times the negative four-thirds. All right. All right, let's see which way we've got to rock this problem here. 2 square root of 5 over square root of 5. Well, you can simplify that problem just to be 2, so 2 plus four-thirds, which is kind of nice. This also, the square root of 5 over square root of 5 simplifies as well, so this becomes 1 minus, because this is going to be negative. Um, 2 times 4 is going to be 8 uh, thirds. All right, so I got 2 plus 4 thirds and 1 minus 8 thirds. Let's get common denominators here. 6 thirds is another way of writing 2. So I got 6 thirds plus 4 thirds. And I got 3 thirds minus 8 thirds. And so what I now have is 6 plus 4, which is 10 thirds. And I have that divided by uh, negative 5 over 3 right there, so that's negative 5 thirds. Well, dividing fractions, please don't cry, just skip and flip and multiply. So the 3 simplify, and this whole problem simplifies to negative 2. Ha! <laughs> Can you beat that? All right, well, thank you for watching the second video of 4 for uh, this section of the trigonometry book. Thank you.